Thank you very much. Uh, I would say after listening to so many talks, it's a special pleasure to be finally speaking and not just listening. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so before I tell you what symplectic homeomorphisms are, let me just quickly recall what symplectic diffeomorphisms are, although probably everybody knows what they are here. So symplectomorphisms of a symplectic manifold, as you could guess, are those diffeomorphisms of M which preserve the symplectic structure. And so what's important to note here is that you know, to write down this equation, you need the map to have a derivative. You, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to pull back a form. So this is the property of D phi. OK, so you might be wondering, how does one make sense of a continuous symplectic map? So what allows us to do that is the following famous theorem of Ilyashberg and Gromov. Here is what it says. Suppose you have a sequence of symplectic diffeomorphisms. And let's assume that these maps converge uniformly, so in C0 topology, to, to a map phi. So just keep in mind that C0 convergence is very weak. It carries no information a priori about the derivatives of the maps. So in fact, the limit map might turn out to be even non-smooth. Now, let's assume that the map is smooth. So let's assume it's a, diff uh, a diffeomorphism. And now it has derivatives, and we can ask if it's symplectic. And what this theorem says is that, yes, the limit map is automatically symplectic. Uh, so it says this uh, C1 condition of being a symplectomorphism survives under C0 limits. And this is exactly what allows us to make sense of the notion of a symplectic homeomorphism. So here's the definition. The set of symplectic homeomorphisms of M, I'll define it to be just what you obtain in the closure of symplectomorphisms. So here I'll take C0 closure, and uh, you know, I'm looking inside homeomorphisms of M. So these are precisely those homeomorphisms which can be obtained in this, these kinds of limits. And what this theorem says is that you know, if you have a smooth symplectic homeomorphism, then it's automatic, automatically a symplectic diffeomorphism. So the definition kind of makes sense. Um, if it is, well, so I'm assuming that the limit map is a diffeomorphism. You mean for the theorem or for here? Oh, I'm taking the closure inside homeomorphisms. Yeah, so I'm only looking, yeah. In fact, it could turn out to be not invertible. So, so I'm only looking at homeomorphisms which can be written as those limits. Thanks. And if you invert it, you can copy it in? Yes, yes. If, if phi i c0 converges to phi and phi is a homeomorphism, then you could check, you could show that the inverses also converge to phi inverse. That's uh, here's an example of symplectic homeomorphisms. So, rich and very interesting class of symplectic homeomorphisms. Uh, so take M to be a surface. I'll spend most of my time talking about this example and omega to be an area form. Then the symplectic homeomorphisms of M are just simply its area preserving homeomorphisms. Okay, so this is where you know, we can start to play fun toys in, with dynamics of area-preserving homeomorphisms using our uh, symplectic tools. So what I want to do now is, in the next 10 minutes or so, tell you about uh, two interesting open problems in, uh, uh, relating to symplectic homeomorphisms. Uh, so first interesting problem is, is going to be about S2. So I'm going to start looking at symplectic homeomorphisms of S2, which, as I just said, is its area-preserving homeomorphisms. Let me call it curly H, just to simplify my life. Uh, so what makes symplectic homeomorphisms of S2 is very interesting is that very, very little is known about its algebraic structure, despite a lot of attempts at, uh, at, at trying to understand it. And the way I got involved with the study of these homeomorphisms was via the following question which was raised by uh, Begin, Corvisiembel. 
so three dynamicists, and they asked this question. Does the group of area-preserving homeomorphisms of the sphere have a dense conjugacy class? Can you find a conjugacy class whose closure gives you everything? And so as I said, they, they arrived at this. I'll give you more motivations behind why they, they came up with this question. This is not the first long-standing open question of the talk. Uh, uh, so uh, I mean, they, they, they got interested in the question because of their interest in al understanding the algebraic structure of SIMPIO of S2. But uh, the motivation, to be more specific, arose in this way. Here is the first open question of the talk. So I'll put it here. So it's a long standing open question. Is the group of area preserving homeomorphisms of the sphere simple? Does this group have a proper normal subgroup or not? And this question arose from the works of Fatih in the, around 1970. So in the 60s and 70s, there was of a uh, research, intense research. Group theoretically, you're putting some topology in the same way. Ah, so at no, no topology here, just as a group, right. So in the 60s or so, there was a lot of interest in understanding the algebraic structure of various diffeomorphism and homeomorphism groups. And questions of this kind, you know, I think there were people such as Thurston, Mather, and Kirby who worked on questions of this kind. And they're basically quite well understood, these groups. Uh, when it comes to volume-preserving homeomorphisms, Fatih wrote a paper in the 70s where he worked out the algebraic structure and is able to, you know, it's usually more complicated than whether it's simple or not, but he managed to work it out for all manifolds, all closed manifolds, except for the two-sphere. So this is the one case that just remains open since 1970. And there has been... So for higher genus, you could show that... Um, so for example, if you take area preserving homeomorphisms with uh, mean rotation vector zero, that gives you a normal subgroup of all area preserving homeomorphisms. So it's the genus is, yeah. Although the question could be reformulated again. Okay, yeah. So you could make this question for the other surfaces too, but you'd have to work a little harder. So in recent years within symplectic geometry, there were some strategies suggested for answering this question. And one strategy, which I'll briefly allude to, was proposed by Enta Foltrovich and also began called Vizian Lowe. Uh, I won't be able to tell you exactly what the strategy is, is, but you'll see how these guys arrived at that question. So they were looking for, their strategy involved finding functions on the group of area-preserving homeomorphisms, which, are, which have the following properties. So first, of course, I want them to be non-constant. And the first property is that they're class functions, so invariant under conjugation. And the second property was that they wanted these functions to be continuous. And then there is, there is several other properties they wanted for these functions. But automatically here, right away here, you see an obstruction to their strategy. If you have a dense conjugacy class, then all of these functions would be continuous. And so that's how these guys arrived at this question. And you know, they were working on this. And so, so I could give you now, they said this is an open question, but that's not. So I could tell you what the answer to this question is. So here's the answer. And that's, what I managed to do a few years ago was that I showed the answer to this question is no. So no conjugacy class is dense. And the way I proved it was by exactly providing non-trivial such function. And the function arises from, uh, so I, I won't go into details of how this function arises, but it arises from Hamiltonian floor theory. So Hamiltonian floor theory uh, allows us to construct a conjugacy invariant function on the group of symplectomorphisms of S2, 
And what I managed to show was that this con function is continuous and it extends to the group, to the, to the entire closure. So which would automatically give you a negative answer to that question. Okay, so the first obstruction is removed. And now hopefully people will manage to answer this question. But we'll see. Um, Um, so in my construction, so the function that th that's in the construction, it's, you know, it's usually called gamma. I think it will feature in Igor's talk later today. So it, it maps from zero to pi over two. And, you know, basically it just allows you to separate, separate them by these values. And zero is, the only thing that's in zero is identity. So in fact, you could show that the identity is not in the closure of any conjugacy class. Okay, so now that's all I'm gonna say about the two-sphere. There are many, many more interesting questions, of course, relating to area-preserving homeomorphisms. But what I wanna talk about next is the four-sphere. So now I wanna talk about symplectic geometry on the four-sphere. And you are probably thinking, even Donald Trump didn't say something this much out there yesterday, but okay. I'll, I'll try to convince you it's not that bad of a question. Um, so why is, so let's just point out that the four sphere is not obviously a symplectic manifold. If you have a symplectic manifold, then the cohomology class of the symplectic form, it's non-zero, and it gives you something in H2 of n. Okay, so four sphere is not symplectic. Now, here's the second long-standing open question. This is one of my favorite questions in continuous symplectic geometry. And I think it goes back to the, the time when this theorem was discovered. And I believe Helmut is very much interested in this question too. Is S4 a topological symplectic manifold? So you could probably guess what I mean by a topological symplectic manifold. Now we have this notion of symplectic homeomorphisms. So a topological symplectic manifold is a manifold equipped with an atlas whose transition maps are all symplectic homeomorphisms. And it is not known whether S4 admits such structure or not. I mean, for that matter, I, I mentioned S4, but you could go for S6, S8, or other manifolds. It could even be the case that there exists non-smooth manifold, manifolds that don't admit this uh, uh, a smooth structure, but yet could be symplectic. These are all interesting open questions to address. I I think so. Yeah. Then you might be able to. Yeah. I think so. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. Yeah. <laughs>